Welcome to Home Dad Chat, brought to you by the National At Home Dad Network. My name is Brock. My name is Danny. We are here to talk about life as stay at home dads. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. No, I don't want much. I even love handmade crafts made of macaroni. Come on now, you should know me. Sometimes I might eat too much. No worry about my weight. Got the dad bod rocking on me. Sketches on my feet. Cargo shorts look good on me. I'm a dad. That's what I do. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Home Dad Chat. Man, it's been an interesting uh, week uh, just getting back into the swing of things after Home Dad Con and everything else. And uh, this is actually kind of like take two of trying to do this interview because uh, I had a, a bit of a uh, family emergency with uh, a situation with my daughter. And so uh, we've got a great guest tonight, though. He was very gracious to uh, adjust his time from last night to come and hang out with Danny and I tonight. And uh, we're going to be talking about books he's written, his like life, uh, fatherhood journey, and uh, just uh, maybe even share some fun stories about a uh, home dad con that uh, he has. And he's got lots of stories. Uh, I got the honor of getting to have uh, um, breakfast and coffee with him uh, this week. And so uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Hogan Hilling uh, a little bit later. But before that, uh, Danny, how was, uh, how was your week, man? My week has been fast. Uh, I really, I'm still not, I, I still think it's Tuesday and it's, and it's definitely not Tuesday anymore. Um, no, it's, it's the been, other T. <laughs> right. It is. It is the other T and it's been very busy, which is good though. It's been a lot of things, especially since after the convention, um, have a lot of new things coming in that, uh, I get to help out with and I'm having a, a blast really. Uh, it's been kind of tiring and I realize, you know, I'm not acting my age right now, let's say, um, <laughs> but I've been enjoying it, you know, even though like at eight. Eight eight o'clock. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go. You just going to lay down. You kids can handle it, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's been tiring, honestly. But it's been really, really had a great week. Everything's going, well, everything's going my way. I just got to, you know, to toot my own horn there. Um, yeah, I was going to ask. I was going to ask what mm-hmm. age you were talking about. Like, I wasn't sure if you were talking younger or middle older. age, man. Middle age. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely acting. Yeah, older. Yeah, it's the <laughs> mileage, man. It's the mileage. It's been a long time, and. uh yeah, but uh, but I've had a really good week. Um, been talking to a lot of people. Been um, really just reconnecting with a lot of people through the from like at the convention and then afterwards, people that I didn't get to talk to you know long enough or get to you know discuss one thing or another or just stuff that we realized we had in common that we want to yeah. talk more about. You know, so it's just kind of the continuation of that uh, brotherhood of fatherhood that uh, we kind of picked up at the convention. How about you there, I heard uh, I heard somebody finally came in and fixed your face. Boom. Uh, well, yeah, I, was, I sat in a dentist chair for two hours today and had, had some cavities taken care of. So we're all good there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, my, um, so my youngest turned six this past week and, uh, so we celebrated her birthday and, and then she had decided to, uh, do some acrobatic stunt and kind of like cut her head open just a tiny bit and, uh, caused a whole bunch of drama last night, but uh, everything is good there. Um, I think the big thing that happened this week was, uh, we put on a virtual memorial for, uh, CJ Trader, um, who, um, unfortunately, uh, passed away the Friday of the convention, uh, in his home. Uh, he passed away in his sleep and, um, a lot of guys knew him, um, actually, uh, Al Watts, Frank Kuyper, and uh, Char- Charlie O'Hara all went to his uh, memorial. And so it was great for us to have some guys from the organization go and, and uh, just kind of be there for his family. Um, I'm actually tonight drinking some Irish whiskey in his honor because that's uh, one of his favorite drinks. So I've got some of that with me tonight. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it was, uh, that was a little hard. That, that was quite hard actually to, uh, to just kind of hear that news. But um, like I said, in the memorial service, it really just showed the amount of guys that came and have been around. It just shows that if anything happens in, in, in that kind of capacity, that the, the, the organization has this amazing group of guys, it's like the brotherhood of fatherhood, like you were talking about, who come around and uh, are just ready to basically uh, get active and, and involved in whatever way they need to. So yeah. um, that to me just brought a lot of joy to me to, to see that just take place with just like the snap of a finger. So um, yeah, so it was, it was, a, it was a good week. Uh, you know, today was insane. Uh, a lot of moving around. I literally didn't get it. I didn't sit down until dinner time, uh, And then I ate and 
took like a 10 minute power nap. So I feel you on the whole like <laughs> <laughs> sleeping thing. Um, but yeah, so not, not a bad deal. But the other thing that was really cool that happened this week was uh, I, I just was on Facebook in the, uh, I think it was one evening or whatever, and uh, maybe Sunday evening. And uh, I saw that Hogan Hilling was uh, in his RV and he's been traveling around the country, uh, running into all these dads that he's known over the years and just reconnecting with them, which is just really cool. And he was saying that he was connecting with the dads that he's had in his books. And I was like, hmm, well, I, I would have been too young to have been in any of his books, but uh, I, I, I feel like if uh, I was an older dad, I, I feel like I, I would have been a pretty good uh, <laughs> possibility to get in there. So I was just like, yeah. Hey, uh, I know I'm not in any of your books, but I would love to meet you and you're going to be in Louisville and I'm in Cincinnati and that's only about an hour, an hour and a half away. And, uh, he agreed to come over and, uh, spend some time with me. And so we got to hang out and, uh, that's kind of how this all was able to get connected. So, uh, I that's, I'm excited that, uh, that Hogan's here tonight to, to chat. <laughs> me too. Me yeah. too. So, with all of that put in place, because a fun little tee up, uh, I'd like to welcome Hogan Hilling to the show. Hogan, how are you doing tonight, man? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. And, yeah, thanks, thanks. and thanks for putting out that message because uh, it was so cool. You know, I said, hey, you know, if you guys showing some love, I might as well stop by. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. I had a great time meeting you and it was just really nice because uh, I couldn't come to the Cincinnati convention and um, I was just thrilled after talking to you that the convention is in really good hands. And, you know, the fact that you guys were able to pull this off uh, post COVID-19. And then, um, of course, my connection to Danny now, you know, because he got <laughs> award. Congratulations, Danny. Uh, just uh, embrace it and enjoy it. Um, I'm, yeah, sure I'm sure it was well deserved. And uh, so it's fitting that I'm here in my RV and I'm talking to you guys. So. I, I'm jealous that you, I'm jealous that you have this RV and you're, you're driving around. I, I, it, uh, that's something that, you know, if I was in your place where I didn't have any kids, I was an empty nester type of deal, I, I would want to do the same thing and, uh, and get out there and see the country and run into friends for sure. Well, I always dreamed of doing this and I can't even believe it's happening because, uh, like you said, I had written some books and a bunch of dads were in there. And at the time that it was published and everything, I thought, hey, wouldn't it be a good idea like to get an RV and just start driving around and actually, because a lot, a lot of the dads I didn't even meet, or I'd never met before. And um, I think I told you when we were having coffee that um, the welcoming and the hospitality that I have received from guys that I even haven't even met and also guys that I've only met at conventions and maybe spent maybe like a few hours with them. It's been really overwhelming, but also grateful. Yeah, that's awesome. You're kind of a it legend. Goes to, it goes back to what you guys mentioned earlier about the brotherhood of fatherhood. You know, I mean, I'm hanging out with Mike Sager, who I probably only had a few hours of conversation, and I'm, I, I spent like three days with the guy. Nice. Uh, he was so entertaining, and I, I, it was great. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm just, I feel very blessed that I'm able to do this. Definitely. Danny, what were you going to say? What were you saying there? Well, I, just Hogan, you're a living legend. I don't, I don't know if you, if you get that, you may not get that. You seem like you've always seemed like a very humble person about your celebrity and the stuff that you've done in the past. But um, I mean, just uh, uh, the award. And I don't want to talk about that too much because I really don't like tooting my own horn in that way. But um, every year we, we, uh, the, the board, gets together and puts that out stop i don't need kleenex yet but uh <laughs> but uh but puts that gives that award to someone that's really done something and i will say for me in raleigh and i think it was raleigh one so 2000 i think 15 um mm -hmm. but that was the first time i ever saw you and um uh, that was you know the, your name became like oh well, that, well that's that's hogan hilling you know and it was mm -hmm. one of those things that was just really impressive to me was the amount of love everybody had for you at that convention. And I, you know, I'd never met you, but it was just like, oh no, yeah, well, yeah, we love this guy. And I, and I didn't know why specifically. I didn't know, I didn't know that you'd written any books at that time or anything, um, or that you'd been on Oprah or all this other, that you'd been an amazing dad for what it was 20 years or something as yeah. an at-home dad, but a very long time doing the same job I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But everybody in that room, you could just feel it. 
um, when you were either they brought you up and you know I think on stage or up in the front. Now, you, um, now you're making me feel guilty that I wasn't there at Cincinnati. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, no. Um, and anytime you want to come to the convention, I'll I'll put you up. You I was gonna say I, I, I think that know. right. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I believe that there's definitely he's on the hook for Phoenix from what I understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You you need anything? You need a room? You need a ticket? You need? Uh, a... I, I I I think I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks for the thanks for the kind words. It's uh, you know, it's nice to know um, that that uh, that that people care about you that much. And you know, and and when I, uh, Al Watts is actually uh, um, a major uh, player in doing this because I, I I actually and I'll tell the story a bit. So uh, I was at the convention and um, I was just roaming around and. And somebody yelled out, hey, these guys are looking for you. Where you been? I'm going like, well, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to take a break from the whole thing. And so I go, I go into the main room and the next thing you know, they're, they made it. That's when they made a decision to do the Hogan Hilling Award. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just like like you, you know, when we, when we you and I asked how warming that was to you. That was, it was really overwhelming to me, too, to actually think that they would to this extent to, you know, name an award after me. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And so I kind of want to go back a little bit in time with you and, and ask you some, uh, some different like questions about things because, um, you know, everybody, well, not everybody, a good portion of people know about you being on the Oprah show. Um, it was something that, honestly, like I had heard about, but I didn't know too much about. And I actually went on YouTube and I just looked up Hogan Hilling Oprah and it popped up this little three minute uh, segment and uh, talked about you and your son and the things that you were going through and how you, you know, basically like, you know, just the immense amount of time and things that you were putting into your son's life. And it, I mean, for the majority of us who are stay at home dads, we do put in a lot of time and effort, but when you have uh, a child who has other um, things going on in their lives that are going to draw more energy out of you than the normal parent, um, it was very interesting to just kind of see that, um, you know, Oprah found your story or whatever. And so um, I just kind of wanted to ask though, like, how did that, how did that come about? Like what, like, you know, I mean, like this was your son was how old when you guys did the segment, like eight or nine? Uh, he was 11. He was 11. Okay. So, you know, prior to that, so you had 11 years before that all took place. Like, how did that story come out and what, uh, what kind of things came out of that? Okay. So just briefly, I went, <clears throat> when my oldest son Grant was two and Wesley was one, uh, that's when I decided to stay home and be the primary caregiver what year and, was that uh 1991 okay. so wesley was, wesley was born in 1989 and grant was born in 1988 and so um prior to me making a decision we had discovered that wesley was having um developmental problems long story short uh, they diagnosed him with what's called angelman syndrome and it's caused by a deletion in the chromosome so basically he's in he's missing information for his brain to communicate with all parts of the body. So another example would be like Down syndrome. They have one too many chromosomes. So that's why their brains are overloaded so they can't function normally. So Wesley cannot walk, he can't talk. Um, he, 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 he just can't function and he needs 24 seven care. So <clears throat> we were trying to balance because I own my own business and my wife was a, 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 a school teacher. She was a speech pathologist. So we're juggling this around and I'm thinking to myself, I go like, you know, uh, I, Wesley needs more care. So we, we looked at it just like at most at-home dad situations. Um, it wasn't a default thing. Um, my wife had the benefits. And so then we just, we just downsized and we just made it work. And so at that time in 1991, we were kind of an anomaly at-home dads. And then all of a sudden the, the media started hearing about me I started actually a dad's club at one of the schools and so I got a lot of media attention and then in 1999 I get a phone call from ABC and they want to do a father's and son's documentary so they wanted to interview me and um, right before that 
phone call, I had written this poem about Wesley. Just sitting there driving and you start really thinking about what's important in life. I've got a boy back there who can't talk. Um, you know, what kind, of, what kind of relationship are you having with your son? Instead of walking with you, I will crawl with you. Instead of focusing on what you cannot do, I will reward you with love for what you can do. Instead of isolating you, I will create adventures for you. Instead of feeling sorry for you, I will respect you. And so, I know someday I'm gonna have my special moment with him in a, in a, in a different way that nobody can take away from me. And that's what I'm looking forward to. With Wesley, I've begun to realize that the father-child relationship is about the soul. And um, I wrote it because I was trying to cope with his diagnosis and it actually helped me realize that. And I, I don't know where it came from and I don't know how I did, did it, but when I see Wesley, I don't see his disability. I just see Wesley. So I just treated him like a normal kid. That's beautiful. And so um, I went to do the interview and I read the poem. Well, what they said was, you know, we're not going to ask you any questions. We just want you to talk about being a dad. So I just started talking. And then I, 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 I read the poem and, it, 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 you know, if you watch the video, it was like a no brainer. They picked me, they put me on the show and it, um, I think Shaquille O'Neal was in there and um, a few other actors and there were other dads there and I actually got to meet some other great dads that weren't at home dads. So it was kind of a mainstream thing. So then in 2000, yeah, 2001, you know, I get a phone call and it's like the producers of Oprah and I'm going like, I'm thinking like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is this a joke? And I'm in shock. Yeah. And so, uh, so then they started asking me questions at home dads because they just had came up with this like sudden idea. You know how the media is. They get an idea and all of a sudden, you know, they got to get it on. And so they did their research, but they didn't know about Wesley. So when they asked me, what about your kids? So I told them, I said, oh, by the way, you know, Wesley's got special needs. And all of a sudden they kind of drew interest because, you know, they were looking for somebody unique. Mm -hmm. And then um, I told them about my parents on ABC. So, I mean, you know, how lucky can I get Oprah calls? And it was like, you know, I was already on a show on ABC. So the, the, they, they saw the video, they called the next day and they said, can we have uh, a camera crew? So they came down that weekend and then they said, well, we want you to come and be on the show the following Wednesday. So everything just happened so fast. And so like, you know, me, I'm just going like, okay, I'm going to be on Oprah. What do I do? What do I say? And so I, I get there, long story short, um, usually what they do is they put you in a green room when you go on the show. And they didn't put me in a green room. And I didn't know why they were doing that. They just put me right into the audience. So I get in the audience and the, they, they introduce the first dad home dad and he, he gets a prize. He gets a weekend golf trip and tickets to the Tampa Bay football game. And at that point I realized I was getting something, but I didn't know what, and I'm, you know, I'm a big basketball fan and I'm thinking like, okay, like, am I going to have dinner with Bobby Knight or, you know, uh, my <laughs> you know, I'm going to go to the final four VIP treatment, all this stuff. And before I could even think about what's going to hit me, she introduces me. I, I get up there and I'm, um, you know, I try to do my best to just be myself, but I'm, I mean, I'm kind of mumbling a little bit and everything and I'm nervous. And the next thing I know, she says the word Daimler Chrysler. And she said, uh, we're giving you a van with a wheelchair lift in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. At the time, at the time we only owned a van. We were, no, we were, we were only surviving on one car because, you know, we had the budget. And so I had to take Wesley, put him in the car and in, in the front of the van and take the wheelchair, put it in the back. So that was kind of like a, a, a huge uh, um, thing for me because now we have two cars, plus I can just wheel Wesley in and out. Yeah. And so um, 
to just to give you an idea of how shocked I was, I was literally standing on the stage and everybody was yelling out, walk to the car, walk to the van, open the <laughs> van, start the van. I mean, you know, so anyway, so I got in the van and, um, and then at, at that time, I realized I have to do this Price is Right or let's make a deal moment. I started finally, you know, getting into the act and I'm like sticking my hand <laughs> out, cheering <laughs> the horn, right? Yeah, and get the TV get, ratings. <laughs> yeah. Then I get backstage and they said, well, if you want to take the van for a drive, you can. I said, I'm in no kitchen to drive right now, but I could use a drink. <laughs> you know, so it was a matter of just good timing and luck. And I'm, I'm grateful that Oprah did that. And, you know, she recognized three other at-home dads there. And it was just really nice that she did that. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I watched the video. I mean, you're, you're a young man at that time. Like I can only imagine like a young dad going through that 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 was pretty uh that was pretty wild for uh just just to watch it from that standpoint i mean how old were you at that time uh let's see oh, i think i was like maybe let's see i think i was 40 okay 40, 40 something yeah yeah and i'm so 60, you're about I'm, yeah i'm 66 now Okay. So you're about my age then basically, because <laughs> I'm 41. So yeah, I, I, I would definitely be exactly in your, I would, I would have probably collapsed with mm -hmm. just the immense emotion. I mean, that's wow. Yeah. Um, so, so that, so that all takes place. Had you, had you even written a book at that time or was it just the well, time no, that you, no. you were just with Wesley at that time? No, I, at that time, what happened was, um, uh, uh, and if, if you guys, you know, if whoever that home does that are listening, if you can do this, if you can journal and write just one little thing about a moment you had every day or like, you know, after three, what I would do is like after every, after every three or four days, I would like think back and I would like put keywords down in my, in a, in a, like a journal. And um, I would just write one, one thing, one funny thing my kid did, or one thing I learned about being a dad. I mean, just a bunch of positive things in there, right? And it, it grew from like the first journal uh, was like a calendar situation. Um, you, I would only like write a sentence, like a couple of sentences per week. But as I got more good at it, then the, I think about, about the, the third journal, it, the, every day was full. <laughs> and I did that for eight years. And somebody said to me, well, you should write a book. And that's how I got into writing. So my first book didn't come out till 2002 after Oprah. Which book was that? um no nah, shoot um the man who would be dad and the man who, oh, yeah. Yeah. so basically it was like a chicken soup for the soul book but only written by but stories only written by one dad okay and is that in the so i'm looking at that book uh currently i'm looking at the cover of it is that you on the front cover yeah and that's wesley oh wow okay yeah he's on my shoulder like for, yeah, yeah that's awesome um so yeah i mean you've written like 12 different like parenting books it looks like uh, okay. yeah but i think i think i think 10 something like that and 10? um first yeah, the other first the first three well the first two books i wrote by myself and then i co-authored a book with a mom and then um i got in a major accident and um i wanted to write kind of a chicken soup for the soul book where i would invite guys to come and and just tell tell their stories right yeah. And so um, Al Watts once told me when I met him that he wanted to write a book, be an author at one time, but basically he wanted to do like an historian book or something. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I was having some medical issues and I knew I couldn't do the book by myself. So I invited Al to do it. So I co-authored a book with, I co-authored two books with Al. Yeah. And as I say, you've, you've co-authored a, a few books with some different guys that I know. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just happened to be scrolling through here on Amazon. I'm finding uh the uh, Dadly Dads, uh, Parents of the 21st Century. And on the front cover, you've got uh, Austin Dowd, mm -hmm. who, uh, yeah. who who co-authored it with you. And then there's a, uh, a very familiar figure on the very front cover of this, because there's a big old picture of uh, the one and only, uh, looks like Don Hudson there. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm trying to figure out, like, the, there's a guy in this, and this might be too much to try to figure out, but there's a guy on the front cover of this. He's got a huge mustache and he's got black gloves on. He looks like he's maybe like a UFC oh, referee or something. He's, no, he's, he's an MMA referee. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one badass dude. Yeah, he <laughs> refs MMA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, you look at the guy. He's like, I mean, you know, he's the guy that you want to mess with, but he's 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 a real lovable dad, and you know, it's just. And and uh, you know, I I I was very blessed because I went on on the internet, and um, those guys dispelled any all the unfortunate stereotypes that are of men. You know, because. Mm they really put their heart out into these stories. And, you know, some of them made, some of them made me cry and others like Shannon's like, just, I couldn't stop laughing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Shannon will make you laugh all day long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that, well, that's their thing too. Like, yeah. So along with the fact that you've got all these other books, you seem to be very supportive of just the national at home dad uh, network and the guys in it. And I mean, I know like Shannon Carpenter, we had him on the show a few weeks ago talking about his new book. And, and I saw where uh, you actually just tapped, you were in town for his, uh, the launch of his book uh, that Wednesday before uh, home dad con. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I was, I, I was really happy that I was able to do that for Shannon because uh you know, he really, he, he, he really deserves to be heard because, uh, you know, he's one of the many exceptional dads that I've, that I've met, um, in my life. And, um, you know, just, and even his wife has been support, so supportive of, of, of the whole stay at home dad role and everything. And, you yeah. know, Shannon's got such a great heart and he's, he's so creative in his fatherhood skills. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Yeah. yeah. To say Danny, Danny's got one of his life hacks always on hand there at his house. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he mentioned at one point, he said, you should just put a shop back, you know, a wet dry back in your kitchen, keep right. it in your dining room. You're going to, and I went, why did I not think of that? I, uh, yeah. And so I immediately, I, I'm like, yeah, I need my, I need my shop back in here. Cause just like he said, and he said it in his book too, the mm -hmm. little ones aren't going to make it. You know, the one that I use for the carpet it is not going to live through my kids, you know, Cheerio yeah. episode or whatever it might be. Yeah. My kids you know, are older now, but the ability to just walk over there and go, oh, yeah, it's all gone. Milk yeah. spilled, Cheerio spilled, whatever it is, it's gone. You know, if the yeah. dog didn't get it. Just, uh, let me just share real quickly uh, uh, something that I really want to share with you guys is um, um, I never had the confidence level that I that I that I actually showed uh, in my later years as an at-home dad, and even now. And uh, one of the, the 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 biggest defining moments in my life is when I attended the at-home dad convention. Mm. And um, um, what happened was I um, I remember this is like 1997 or 1996 because the first at-home dad convention I think was 1990 no 1997. Yeah. So I'm in LA uh, area and I'm driving in my car and I hear this interview with um, uh, Casey Spencer and he's an at-home dad and they're interviewing him and I'm going like, oh, wow, this is great. They're actually interviewing an at-home dad, you know, something I do. So I kind of made that connection. So I called the radio and, and Casey mentioned the at-home dad convention. So then I, I said, well, I got to get a hold of this guy. So I got a hold of him through the radio. And then, of course, you know, we connected and we started talking and he connected me to another guy. And then he said, I oh, come to the convention in Chicago. And at that time, I was struggling with my identity. It's not that I didn't feel comfortable. I felt really, really comfortable with my choice because I'd been it for four or five years and I loved what I was doing. But everybody around me was telling me that what I was doing was wrong. <laughs> mm. And you know, my in-laws, my parents, my uh, uh, my wife's coworkers. I would show up at school, and the moms would be going like, "What are you doing here?" You know, I was like perceived like as I'm being lazy. I'm the bum. I did this by default. And even despite they were that, even despite the fact that I was showing all this love for a special needs child, people just couldn't embrace the idea that a guy was capable of this, right? And so I was just second guessing myself all the time. So then I go to the convention. I meet Jim Desenzo and I meet Marty Josephson and I see how comfortable they are under their skin and they, they don't give a shit what anybody else says. Those two guys, those two guys were, were, were pivotal in my life and getting me over the hump. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm so, um, so passionate about uh, telling people, you know, you got to keep this convention going because I saw the impact it had on me. And then I saw the impact that it had on other people. I mean, it, it it's amazing and i'm sure you guys have experienced that all that so if i have oh, any, yeah. say to anybody who's watching or listening to this is like don't let this thing die and i i remember you and i having a conversation brock about how you know nothing much has changed and that it's slowly starting to embrace because 
people have realized you guys aren't going away. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but it's so true though. Like, you know, everything that you everything that you just described from like the identity side to it to like getting your confidence built up to run into guys who, like you said, don't give a shit because they're just like, this is my life to the people that you run into who question what you're doing. It's really kind of, it's actually very surprising to me that here we are in 2021 and those same sentiments are still there. They are still the hurdles that us stay-at-home dads deal with on a regular basis. And it's like, come on, everybody get over it. Like, you know, parents are going to be parents and people just need to accept that. And I mean, not to get like political or anything, but the crap that's happening right now with the whole paid leave and, and, you know, the family stuff that's going on and the fact that like, you know, you've got some billionaire dude who can't seem to figure out that life isn't like it was when he was younger. And that, you know, just because you have lots of money doesn't mean everybody else does. Doesn't mean that, you know, you shouldn't be looking out for everybody else. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, the like, fact that they're leaving dads out of the equation of the whole. Oh yeah, that too. Definitely. I mean, that, yeah, that's the other thing. Like, you know, when it, when it's just talking about, you know, moms in different realms and it's like, you need to change the language. Like it needs to be parents. Like it doesn't matter, mom, dad, whatever. Like there are so many different combinations. You know, the, interesting, now. the interesting thing about this too, is that I found is that, you know, it's the adults that are making these issues. If you really ask the kids, they don't care if it's mom or dad. They just want a parent there. Right. You know, yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So I, so one, yeah, no, head, Danny, what do you got? I'm going to okay, take cool. up your time. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I just wanted to say that I've had my kids mention it, that like another kid at school had said, you know, where well, your dad's doing all the cooking. And <laughs> my kid has never lived any other way, you know, and I, oh, yeah. my, my wife knows how to cook, but she's definitely not like I love cooking and I love making food for people and making them happy. And my kids know that. And my so wife basically will that it basically the abnormal is normal for him. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> there's no difference. And they're like, your mom does all the cooking. Why? You know, like, because she's good at it and she loves it, you know, but like you said, the kids have no understanding that it must be this way. It must be this way. You know, this is dad's role. This is mom's role. I mean, my wife and I, after many years of practice have basically come down to, Who's best to do this job? Doesn't mm -hmm. matter mom or dad. Like well, I'll mention the budget as an example because I'm so proud of my wife because we would be destitute if it was me doing the budget. <laughs> my wife is, I mean, has a spreadsheet six months in advance of our budget. <laughs> and I'm like, I couldn't even make a month in advance. This is amazing, you know, and she's always on top of it. And it's absolutely obvious she's the best one for it. And I've had yeah. other dads, and you know, other men really, I don't know if they were dads, but I've had men be like, well, you're you got to go ask your wife's permission. I'm like, I don't want to screw up the budget. We have kids to feed. We have bills. So yeah, I'm going to ask no, my no, wife. That, you know, you, you, well, you, have there, a concern, you have a concern for your wife, too. Because I know I, I, when, I, when my wife decided to stay uh, to go to work is I, I was very careful to not put too much because, you know, it was a role. I want to make sure that I don't put pressure on her because she's already dealing with the, with the whole guilt of not being there. And now she's yeah. taken on this whole financial provider role. And so I said, Hey, you know, I, I want to watch the budget and yeah, of course I got to communicate with her to make sure, you know, we spend uh, the money wisely. Yeah. So you're a team. Yeah, you gotta, you're, yeah. It's a team effort. You gotta, you gotta work together. If you're not communicating, then that's when things start falling apart. Oh, sure. by the way, Danny, I see you smoking a cigar, you know, uh, I, I smoke cigars too. So um, <laughs> when I get to Wisconsin there, we can, Absolutely. you know, have a drink. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. and, That's what... and I don't know if you like beer or if you're more like uh, bourbon or whiskey or scotch, but. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm not a bourbon scotch guy, but I'm a beer guy and uh, other alcohol beverages. You know, I tried the, I tried the bourbon scotch thing. It just doesn't work for me. The only thing, the closest thing I've done to it was Jack fire. And if you want to bust my balls about that, go ahead. I got, no, I got no, it. you're not fine. Not but hey, no, you're going to be, hey, you're going to be up there in Wisconsin visiting Danny and there are lots of good choices for beer up there for sure. Yep. So I'm sure, I'm sure he can find some good I, stuff. For I you. will ask, I will ask people that know because I, I don't drink beer. Um, I just don't. Okay, that's and I would be like, here, this is our, we, we do actually have a, a beer that's produced locally. It's called Point Beer. So I'm Stevens Point, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, let's, oh, that was bad. Okay. Not yeah, I love but my. I think some beers I love, but I'm, I'm but I'm open to trying other things. But can I just share the Chad Welch story real quick? It just it's a great story, and it's just uh, uh, another example of how 
you know, you, you just never know how uh, a conversation you're having with someone there is going to impact that person and how it's going to maybe affect the organization in a good way. Definitely. So, Who's uh, Chad Welch? Uh, what's that? Who is Chad Welch? Uh, Chad Welch, is, uh, he, he, he's been on the board uh, in previous years, and he's an at-home dad. Okay. He, he comes to the convention. I forget which convention he come to, but he's, you know, real, real introvert, real quiet guy, uh, kind of shy. And so we're at the restaurant and um, he, he arrived and then he planned to leave on Saturday. And so when he mentioned he was leaving Saturday, you know, I felt really bad. I said, oh, no, it's a shame that, you, you know, you, you can't stick around. And he said, uh, well, you know, I didn't I didn't realize the extent of the convention. And, you know, he already had a flavor for it, like he was only there for two days. And so he said, well, I got to leave because we have a St. Louis football game, Cardinals football game to go to tomorrow. And, you know, his wife is going to go with them. Right. And I and I kind of I kind you know, I'm kind of a jokester. You know, I don't know if. Um, people have told you that but uh, oh yes you are <laughs> so hey come on you know even when i was a at home dad i was pulling jokes with my kids because it was entertaining and it helped me get through the tough times. oh i didn't say it was a bad thing i just <laughs> yeah man for sure okay. so uh, i just i just turned to chad and i said well why don't you just call up your wife you know and ask her if it's okay if you stick around and not go to the football game tomorrow <laughs> and then after i said i'm going like wait you know, I rarely know this guy. I don't know what the relationship in the marriage is. Right? <laughs> and will he actually do it? <laughs> so he did it. He called his wife up. He goes like, you know, I don't know what he said to her, but she gave him the green light and he stayed. <laughs> nice. That's great. All right. I had so much fun with the guy. Like, as you know, he started getting really comfortable. Right. And then like, you know, in the next time, next couple of years, he's like gung ho active. And I'm going, you know, uh, uh, he became out in fact he became al watts's campaign manager when he was campaigning for the president for president of the national defender he put on this whole big campaign for al awesome. oh, <laughs> and man. buttons and everything see danny you didn't have to even do a campaign you yeah. all you had to do is hand out stickers danny You're yeah, good. I, I tried to get buttons man i just couldn't uh, i couldn't put it in the budget unfortunately <laughs> but uh yeah. Oh, I love shoot. It. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. I, and I think that it really just shows the whole how quickly uh, you connect with uh, somebody. I mean, it's just, it's so fast at Home Dad Con. I mean, partially, in fact, because one, like you're there, like that's the whole idea. Like you've come to be around other people who are like minded. You don't have to ask what they do because we all know what we do. And, should, and we talked about this too is that there's no way to describe what happens there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Really it's mean. just a beautiful it's a beautiful just like explosion of awesomeness honestly <laughs> just because i mean you come there and it's like i think a lot of guys especially yeah, this year had it. there's no words you tried explosion of awesomeness. i know i didn't get it <laughs> I, will, I will say this though uh so philip fry who um he he found us uh through um his i think it was his therapist or whatever like it was really cool but he got connected to like the virtual convention and then he came this year mm -hmm. and uh, it was funny because I talked to him later and he's like, I had no idea what this was going to be like. He's like, this was amazing. So much like just socializing and camaraderie and knowledge and all these different things. He's like, he's like, I just didn't expect that. He's like, I didn't know what I, what I was going to experience, but he's like, I really didn't think it was going to be all of these things. And he was just blown away by it. And I'm like, I'm so glad you came and experienced it because to, to know him and, and to get to know him, like he's one of those dads where it's like, you could be like, yeah, man, this is really cool. You should check it out. And he kind of would give you that. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. And not sure if he's going to show up or not. Yeah. Uh -huh. But then he just, you know, he came and uh, it was it was well worth it. And I think that's the thing that I would probably tell most guys who are in a situation where they're just kind of looking at you sideways about, you know, a convention for stay at home dads. It's like, well, listen to these guys. Look what they're telling you. Like, you know, what well, are you into? Just, just even the mainstream, you, you, you're going to get that same reaction too. Yeah. You know, guys think, hey, they have this like preconceived notion of what it is that um you know that i'm going there to get fixed or something and that's not the case and like you said before it's like you don't know what to expect and then when you get there it's like way more than you ever expected right 
I, so I want to jump back real quick into, into some of your books, just to kind of give some folks that are listening to hear something. One of the things that I thought was really cool is you have these books that are directed towards the, um, the pregnant mom and the dad to be. And, uh, I think that that's really cool because like, it just sort of basically like shoots holes in the whole, like what to expect when inspecting kind of deal. And it brings it more into a personal deal. So like, for instance, like you have the, what he's thinking when you're pregnant, which Mm -hmm. I think is just awesome. Like, I didn't even know that was a resource. And my thing is like, you know, when I became a dad, I didn't even think to be like, oh yeah. Like, are there even like books on fatherhood? Like that? I mean, my oldest is eight. So eight years ago, I never even thought of this and these books were around and it just wasn't something that I would have ever thought, but you had that, you have that one. And then there's the, what she's thinking when she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and like those two alone, I would have loved to have had, (laughs) because honestly, (laughs) you know, it's like, who knows? And then, uh, the other one I thought that was really great. You have the modern mom's guide to dads. Um, Mm -hmm. so the, the, those are a few of the ones that I was like, when I was looking through your list of stuff, uh, just, I was seeing like, man, these are, those were uh, three resources that I would have loved to have had. And then of course you've got the one that, uh, you did with Al with, which is, uh, dad's behaving dadly, uh, the 67 truth tears and triumphs of a modern fatherhood, which I think in, in line kind of falls in with what we as an organization do for our monthly newsletter, which is try to grab up uh, dad victories, uh, stories from dads within the group um, who were sharing success stories or maybe like a failure that took place, but they learned something from it or whatever and giving giving light to that and, and showing guys like, hey, <laughs> it's okay if you screw up. Like, you know. You're, well, you know, th- those two books are amazing too because we yeah. have dads from other countries mm. that that's, yeah. that's even better too because like you're yeah. getting that culture yeah outside of yeah. what you might know mm-hmm. and, and just that. speaking of the newsletter just so it's out there hogan and if you ever feel like hey i'd like to write something for the newsletter yeah okay okay come on yes you are we'll more than anything, welcome anything you want. okay yes well, thanks for that i just thanks wanted to tell that you. invitation because uh you know this rope this road trip is like opening a, a whole new world for me and um as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm journaling. I'm basically, I'm just writing descriptions of like reuniting with dads and also um, meeting new dads. And what's great about this trip too, is that the at-home dads that I know, I get to meet their families. Yes. Because can we just, have like, a de- can we just have like a Dear Hogan type thing? Like Dear Abby, let people like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for those of us who have, know what Dear I love, Abby I love is. Yeah, some Brock and support. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know, you know, right now I'm just, trying to have fun and i'm just doing this for my own personal um yeah. reasons and um you know people have always already talked about well you know they're thinking about writing a book blah 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 and i'm going like well you know i'll, I'll see how this plays out right but um uh, we'll see um but I'm, yeah. I'm just having fun and um you know that's the one thing that um again i feel blessed is that i just met I, i've only met the dads at the convention and now I get to, I get to, I get to meet the women that supported them. I get to meet their kids. You know, I'm having, I'm having a blast with, with the wives and the kids. And I told, I think it was, uh, I, th- oh, I told, oh yeah, Phil, you know, Phil was, uh, Phil was a fabulous host. I mean, he's, you know, he's always checking up on me to see him if I'm okay on the trip. Right. And so, uh, so I finally got to meet his wife, Ann, and uh, she's got a great sense of humor. I just love her company. And then uh, one night when, uh, when, when Phil, uh, Drop me off. I said, I said, hey, Phil, uh, tomorrow night you stay home. I'm going to go out with your wife, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, I, I really like the fact that you get to come here to the house and you got to meet my wife for a little bit. You know, she took a break from what she was doing uh, work wise in the office and got to hang out in the porch for a little bit and talk. So, um, yeah, definitely. That, that's really cool that you're getting to meet the, uh, all the uh, supportive spouses with the, of the dads. That's really the cool. Kids. I, I really I, yeah. I love that we, because I just moved up to Wisconsin and uh, the Twin Cities are about three hours away. So it may not be like a daily thing or a weekly thing, but they've already planned several events and they're like, they put me in the list. I'm like, yeah, we'd love to. And I think about going, you know, after COVID and everything, but going to their house and hanging out and, you know, they want to grill or they've got a pool or whatever, but all of our kids together and just, all playing together you know even if they don't get along or whatever what may happen but the reality of it being you see someone really in their element you know Mm -hmm. and you really learn a lot more about 
who they are and what an awesome person they are and what an awesome dad oh, yeah. they are, mm -hmm. you know, because you see how they operate with their kids. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that relationship with the spouse, too, is, is always. I have, I have a I funny wonder. story about Al. When I went to visit Al, I had to go. I went there because we were editing the books and stuff. And so I got to spend some uh, time with him and his family. And it's just interesting, like, to see the different parenting styles that that, that that you see like in other families you know and they do what they do what they do because that's what works for them right and al is a real stickler for like discipline with his kids and everything which is great you know and he 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 admit he he, he puts them in time out and so like i'm hanging around the house you know and i'm, I'm a goofball and everything it's like he he was so strict and disciplined it's like he even got to me and i'm going like i better be careful how i behave because he might put me in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to we got to meet one of Al's kids actually this year for Home Dad Con because uh, his son Miles uh, came and spoke about his journey of uh, basically transiting to trans mask and uh, did I say that right? Pretty trans good, mask? yeah. Yeah, trans 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 yeah. Trans yeah. Trans and trans and trans so uh, it was really cool to get to talk to Miles and just to see the relationship that he has with his dad it was actually really cool um joe saladino who we've had on the show before as part of the uh sad beer cast um he's also a photographer and um he you know it's, it's not unusual to see him with a camera in his hand when he's at home dad con um and he snapped this beautiful picture of him and my of, of al and miles just in a like very tender embrace uh, after we were doing some group shots outside. And uh, it's just, you could just see the love. It was just amazing. Yeah. And then, um, and then the next day, like we actually got to hear him in the keynote and uh, it just kind of all came together. But um, yeah, I could see that without like, I definitely, I mean, he's, he's definitely disciplined. I mean, I'm sure but, like, but, but, you know, in a very loving way. And oh, yeah. You see that with Miles. But uh, no, when I was with Al, you know, he, he de definitely loves his kids. And every at home dad, I, I not every 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 dad I've met, whether the mainstream at home dads uh, that I've known. I mean, I, I see so much love in so many different ways. And, uh, you know, Miles is lucky to have Al as a dad you know, yeah. especially this day and age. And it's nice that you guys embraced uh, that part of it because not everybody experiences that. But I think, I think, uh, like even for me, you know, with me, with Wesley and uh, Al with, with Miles and some of the abnormal situations that we've had to deal with um, is that I, I think, you know, for me, and I think it's true with Al is like, you know, when he sees Miles, he tries to make life as normal as possible as he can for Miles. And that's kind of the same thing that I did with uh, Wesley. I, I not only made life normal for him, but I was making life normal for me because he's just my kid. And, yeah. you know, my whole thing with him was that because um, so many times you get dads that kind of live vicariously through their kids and they want their kids like to excel and do this stuff. And like, you know, Wesley had, has kind of opened up a whole new world for me. And he made me realize that, you know, I should live up to his expectations of me, not the other way around. And so, um, that's so true. Yeah. So I am, yeah. so I am curious. Uh, so you've got, you have three boys, right? Yeah. So your oldest boy is, you were telling me he plays volleyball. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Grant played volleyball. Um, and, uh, and so did Matt, um, Grant's okay. 41 and Matt's 28. Now Wesley's 30. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so Wesley, um, you know, like you were saying in the video and we've been talking about tonight, like he needs like around the clock care. Mm -hmm. Um, what is, what does that look like for him, uh, now as a 30 year old adult? Um, well, you know, they, uh, his lifespan could be anywhere of like, you know, 70 or 80. I mean, you know, that just, just reality. Some, some kids that have special needs, if they have medical problems, uh, you know, they die a little bit early, but it's every kid's different. Uh, but is he in assisted be, living or how? Yeah, how he's it, assist, yeah, he's in assisted living. Um, and um, um, I was very diligent in terms of finding the right house with the right people, like anything else, you know, got to do your homework. And um, yeah, and, he, and you really need to do that because, you know, I have, like on this trip, like I'm away from him, but I have peace of mind knowing that he's in good hands. I, I, I talk, I communicate with the caregivers on a regular basis and, you know, just to let them know that, you know, ask him if he's okay and stuff like that. And um, COVID-19 actually prepared me for this trip too, because during COVID-19, I couldn't see him for 18 months. And that was really hard because mm. I frequently visited him and I understood why. And, 
um, you know, there's no, like we couldn't do zoom and stuff like that because he just doesn't, he can't, he can't com um, put that all together. And if he saw me, he, want, he wouldn't want to touch me. Yeah. So we just, um, we just said, Hey, no, don't worry. But Wesley has no sense of time. So after 18 months, when I went there, it was just as if he saw me like, like maybe like three to four days ago. Awesome. Well, that's so good. I'm mean, lucky in that sense. Yeah. 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 No, definitely. That's great. Well, Hey, Hogan, thanks so much for coming on and, and giving us some time to just talk with you. Dude, I really, uh, it was a pleasure to get to meet you in person. I, I still kick my, I still kick myself that I woke up in the morning and realized that I didn't even get you to sign the, the book. Well, I actually, uh, have, a, I actually have a, I actually have a surprise for you and I have a quick comment to make. I'm coming back and I'm going to sign the book for you. What? I'm going to reroute my trip. I'm coming up. Yeah. I'll let you know when. Okay. I told Danny this last night, so I'm going to come around <laughs> Then I'm going to go through Lex way back and then i'm you know because i'm only an hour and a half away and i know if i take off i'm gonna beat myself up for not going back <laughs> <laughs> well so you gotta let me know it, ahead of time uh, when so that i can go to my favorite bottle shop and get you a good mixer of cincinnati beers for you to take with you okay sounds good no, i'll definitely do that <laughs> but, um, um just some part just some parting words okay look it's being an at-home dad or any kind of dad and even in the mainstream is hard and you're going to have issues and challenges um my advice would be have fun you know you can still have fun and that'll get you over the rough edges and, and um just and you know just even have conversations with them even if, if it's on the phone but make that connection because that's going to help your skin get a little thicker also, show some compassion for your spouses and, you know, talk to them and say, hey, you know, I know you're struggling. I know that you're taking on a different role because the media has really ignored that, uh, you know, because they're always focusing on us. And that's a new role for them. And so, you know, be just be, have some empathy for your wife and the role that she's learning how to do. And, you know, I, I saw my role as, as a privilege. I mean, I have great respect for uh, my, uh, she's my ex-wife now, but I still have great respect for her because she gave me an opportunity that most women wouldn't give to any man. And I have, I have no regrets for, for being an at-home for 20 years. And the last thing that I need to say to all you guys is I like, keep on daddy and don't stop. Love it. Man, Yay. thanks so much. Thank you so much for sharing all that, dude. <laughs> Seriously, that, uh, wow. <laughs> So I'll see you soon. And Danny, I'm looking forward to seeing you, man. And uh, yes, sir. light up a cigar, have a few drinks, and uh, love to hear more about your life and your family, man. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. And when, whenever. And I'm lots of love to you guys. Thanks for doing the love show. Love you, Hogan, so much. Thanks, Thank Hogan. You. Have a good one. I'm a dad, that's what I do.